Hey guys, Rick with Killer Innovations. Wanted to go over our compensator line with you real quick. Um, some just installation uh, instructions, some troubleshooting techniques, and just some things that we recommend you do so you can get going smoother and enjoy this compensator. So first thing, um, when you get your compensator, make sure that you follow the instructions. Um, I'm not gonna go through everything the instructions have in them. They give you all the, you know, uh, installation techniques and, and, you know, kind of the steps and procedures that you go through. And it gives you a little bit of information about some of the stuff that we're gonna go over here, but more in this session, I wanna get into some of the things that are gonna help you out and some of the things that are not obvious once you get it installed. So, one, when you put the thing on, you should always make sure that you got the button depressed. Um, when you're turning this ring on the front, um, you don't want it to hear like a ratching sound. Um, what that's doing is it's wearing the tooth off of the friction lock. So make sure that you have the button depressed all the way anytime that you're turning the locking ring on or off uh, of the barrel. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go over was the recoil spring. Now Glock 19s are the most temperamental and we normally see people run a 13 pound spring to make it function correctly. Um, we actually sell a 13 pound spring on our website if you don't have one. Um, but we do recommend that you use a flat wound uh, spring, not a wire spring. The wire springs will create problems for you. They hang up on the frame when they compress and they slow everything down. So make sure that you're using a flat wound 13 pound spring on the Glock 19. Glock 17s are a little bit more forgiving. Um, it really depends on the ammo that you're running. Um, some guys will still reduce the spring weight on those. We've seen them go all the way down to 11 pounds. Um, 13 and 15 pounds is the most common that we see. Again, flat wound springs. The other thing that we want to go over is the ammo. Now, we did not tune this compensator to eat everything because if we did, the really weak stuff would work okay, but the stuff that was really hot, it would feel like there wasn't a comp on your gun at all. So we had to tune this thing to the middle to the top end of the power range. So. Um, uh, and every ammo is a little different. We test in, here in the factory with American Eagle 115 grain ball ammo and Cabela's brand Herders, they're 115 grain ball. So that's what we test with and tune with here in the factory. If it's not running with those two ammos, um, you got other issues going on. And so, and we guarantee, you know, if everything's right, this thing will run. Um, now, it loves plus P ammo, so if you're going to carry this for defense or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're probably running plus P ammo. Um, it really, it, it's tuned for that, um, but it will, it will eat some normal ball blasting ammo as well. Um, if you're having problems getting this thing to function, um, that's what this next section is going to be about, and we're going to go through some of the little things that you can check and go through to um, try to troubleshoot what's going on. Okay guys, so in this section, what I'm gonna go over are some troubleshooting techniques that you can do um, if you're having problems getting your gun to cycle. And usually what you're gonna experience is um, stove piping or misfeeds um, because what's happening is the comp has taken out all the energy from the slide and so the slide's not coming all the way back, so it's not getting a full run loading the next cartridge, or it's not getting a good solid eject. Um, so what we wanna do first is, um, one, you wanna make sure that your gun is broken. We recommend two to 300 rounds through your gun before you even try to run the compensator. You need the finishes to break in and become smooth to each other um, before you really start this process. And we normally recommend running grease during that break-in period. It'll help those finishes burnish into each other correctly and not gall. Um, once, once you have everything broke in, 
um, and you put the thing on and you're running good ammo and you've got the correct spring in it. Um, if it's still giving you problems, there's some things that we can check. So um, I'm gonna get into that right now. So first thing, you wanna make sure that the barrel is fitting into the slide correctly without any force. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this gun down real quick. So what you wanna do is hold the gun upside down and you just wanna take, and that thing should just fall down on its own. The barrel should fall into battery without any force. You shouldn't have to push down right here. If there's any drag right here, things are too tight. There could be some minor gunsmithing you need to do to make sure that it's not doing that. Our barrels and slides um, are tuned to each other and we're also tuned to Glock slides. There are some other manufacturers out there that, um, that seem to run a little tighter. Um, we've only run into a couple of them, but there is the possibility that this is a little bit of a too tight of a fit, and that will give you problems if you experience that. The other thing you wanna do is, and I'm not gonna do it here, but if you're having problems, take all of the hardware out of your frame, disassemble it completely, take the trigger out, take the, the slide lock, the, the locking block, all that stuff out, take everything off of your slide and try running your slide on the rails of the frame and make sure that there's no tight spots or sticky spots, um, especially if your uh, frame is Cerakoted. We've seen that the polymer will expand and kind of do some weird things um, during the baking when they, when they Cerakote it or, um, and when they stipple, it also puts some heat into the frame which can kind of distort things. So you wanna make sure that your, your rails are sliding really free, really smooth. And again, we, we recommend grease when you're breaking those rails into your slide. Um, the, uh, it's, it can be a problem. We don't see this very often um, with the rails, but we have seen it. Um, if they are tight, you can correct it by just filing a little bit very slowly. Um, off of the sides of the rails. Um, just taking a little bit of material off, once you find that it fits nice, then you can kind of polish them up a little bit uh, with a Dremel or something like that. Um, and just make sure you keep it nice and flat. So um, if you're still having issues after all that, um, we've seen issues with triggers. Some triggers and trigger bars and connectors will put access drag on the slide while you're shooting. Um, we've seen this especially with a couple of brand connectors like Ghost Connectors and some other ones um, that they really seem to put a lot of drag on the slide when you're running our comp, it'll slow it down enough to where it doesn't want to function. Uh, when we replace the connectors back to stock um, and a stock trigger bar, and all stock trigger components, it should run. If it's not running there, you got another, another issue somewhere else. But um, if, you, if you get all the way to the end and it's still not running, try swapping your trigger stuff back out to stock, give it a shot, see what it does. Um, and that's pretty much the, the, the biggest things that you gotta look out for and some of the things that you can try. Uh, when you're getting this comp going. I can guarantee you once you get it running, you're not gonna even wanna shoot your gun without the comp on it because it shoots so flat. Um, but they can be a little temperamental in the beginning just to get everything figured out and tuned up. Um, but once you're, once you're rolling, you're rolling and you're gonna love it. So that's pretty much everything right now. I appreciate all the support. Um, keep watching our, um, for our new YouTube videos to come out. We're gonna do a lot of different tabletop reviews like this try to give you guys more education on our product line, how it works, and how to get it installed correctly. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.